Last year, we saw the publisher of WikiLeaks, Julian Assange, dragged out of the Ecuadorian embassy in England and put into the Belmarsh Detention Center, a supermax prison for 50 weeks for the crime of skip, skipping bail. He dared skip bail in the country of Sweden for a crime that had been dismissed three times due to lack of evidence, which means he kind of never skipped bail. And under that pretense, he was in prison for, well, uh, realistically, nothing. What the establishment is trying to prove to us with this show trial of Assange is that is what happens when you reveal their crimes. Julian Assange and WikiLeaks revealed so many different kinds of war crimes and corporate fraud that Skittles is coming out with a new bag of flavors to capitalize on these tragedies. Skittles, taste the war crimes. And with that, with the amount of information he revealed over the course of a decade, he has never had to reprint a retraction. Meanwhile, I can point out any errors and exclusions in virtually every piece of corporate media, and not, and not just in their grammatical errors, but also in the way they say words out loud with their mouth. Now, Julian Assange's wrongful imprisonment and show trial to get extradited to the United States on the behest of a 108-year-old law that has no bearing in our current climate will determine the future of free press and journalism. We will address this law a little later. Now, Julian Assange represents what a free press should be. It should be able to criticize those in power and shed light on their crimes. The question no one seems to be asking is, why is it necessary for these elites to have confidentiality if and when they're not doing anything wrong? I mean, that is the argument they use to justify spying on us, so I think that's a fair argument to use when we're assessing their covert ops against the populace. Look, if the CIA wasn't doing anything wrong, they could just come out and say, hey, look, we're spying on you with every camera around, and yes, we have seen most of you masturbate, and it is weird. Instead, we had to find out from the Walt 7 leaks that smart technology is listening and watching you all the time. I mean, the panopticon is real, and we carry it around in our pockets and watch sports ball with it. This has led to Mike Pompeo calling uh, Assange a hostile, non-state actor. That's a hard slam, too. I mean, he took away Assange's state. Is he solid? gaseous, liquid. I mean, Pompeo just took all of those qualities away because he and the CIA got caught spying on the citizens of America. Look, Assange doesn't need a state because he's transcended that. The truth has no state. It just is. If the DNC didn't illegally tamper with the election in 2016, they could just come out and say, look, we hate Bernie Sanders and his Jewishness, and we're going to use all of that against him to ensure that he's not the nominee of our party. We think our voters are too dumb to make the right choices to enrich us, so we're just going to make the choice for them. Instead, Assange revealed the emails that the DNC and the Clinton campaign were sending each other about colluding to take the nomination away from Bernie. If the American military didn't commit any crimes by shooting down innocent civilians and two journalists, they would have just come out and, say, come out and said, hey, look, we like to watch things die and think, you know, the, the world is our plaything. Okay, we're America, and we're kind of sociopathic, but that's why you love us. Okay, don't, don't say that you don't, because, because I'm telling you that you do, and you're just too dumb to know what you can and can't love. Okay, I am, we, we are America, and we are giving you the privilege of loving us at gunpoint. Instead, Assange revealed the war crimes of the American military with the help of Chelsea Manning. And even Manning is a victim of the attacks on, on Assange. The grand jury in America is trying to get Chelsea Manning to say that Julian Assange forced her into getting confidential files from the American military. But 
they really didn't need a password to, to hack into anything because Manning had access to the reveal files and the only thing they might have needed a password for was to download a video game. And I bet it wasn't even like Medal of Honor, but rather something like way more cool, like Bookworm or Jeopardy, the video game. But that put them in real life Jeopardy. I'll take false accusations on whistleblowers and heroes for $1,000, Alex. Chelsea Manning is in prison incurring $1,000 a day under quote-unquote coercive confinement. This means that she'll be in prison till she gives the grand jury what they want. What they're actually doing is illegal under international law. So if the United States loses this battle, both the Trump and the Obama administration could be called into the International Criminal Court to answer for why they allowed this to happen. Remember, Obama could have fully pardoned Manning, but he only partially commuted her sentence. At this point, Assange has served his 50 weeks in Belmarsh Supermax, but still remains in prison. His current trial will determine whether or not he gets extradited to the United States to serve time with hardened criminals and some pot smokers, since the American prison industrial complex thinks they're basically the same thing. And that's the major concern for Assange and his legal team. He'll have to face the American prison system. Look, nobody should be in our prison systems. Okay, American prisons are a violation to humanity, logic, and nature. Most prisoners would rather be in Buffalo Bill's hole in a basement in Oklahoma. At least there, they get to put lotion on their skins and then into baskets that they may or may not have weaved through other people's skin. And look, even though he's going to kill you, he does give you health care. No point in stealing the skin off of an unhealthy person, okay? Buffalo Bill has standards. The American prison system eh, does not. Assange has already gone through severe trauma, both mentally and physically. Being in an American prison where whistleblowers are denied protection and even medical treatment would mean a slow, torturous demise for a hero. The man has been through enough, and being in an American prison system will be a complete and total violation of his human rights. The first two days of trial showed the establishment elites that people support Julian Assange. Taylor Hudak from The Watchdog and Action for Assange reported that there was so much support from the people for Assange that they drowned out the judge with their cheers of support. The power of the people's voices is so large that they can render a judge silent before wrongful accusation. And there was no anti-Assange protesters outside the courthouse. In two days, they have also shown how completely unfair this system is to Assange. Julian Assange was moved five times to different cells, handcuffed for a lot of the day, and subject to strip searches. You know, for, for someone that allegedly committed a sexual assault crime with no proof, he's very clearly going through some forms of sexual abuse. I mean, how many weeks do these guards have to spend in Belmarsh for this? The point of all this was to disorient an already disoriented human being. The second day of the trial discussed the U.S.-U.K. extradition treaty, which states that you can't extradite anyone under a political crime. Right? But the prosecution is saying that we should be following a domestic extradition law. The law would most definitely favor America's extradition of Assange over 10-year-old articles that prove the nation's crime against its own people and innocent civilians. The American war criminals still remain free. Assange's extradition to the United States doesn't even make sense. Julian Assange is Australian, not American. He has no loyalty to America, and he revealed crimes committed by the elites from all across the globe. Now, they claim that the U.S.-U.K. extradition treaty doesn't apply to Assange because what he did constitutes as a political crime, but, but he's not a political prisoner. 
Okay, it's different for Assange because, uh, I don't know, let's say Russia. And according to Consortium News' Joe Lorry, in order for something to be a political crime, you need to have intent to overthrow the government and be on the country's soil, neither of which were Assange's goal. This narrative is the establishment's attempt at a, at a uh, to uh, attempt to continue their xenophobic and McCarthyist smear campaign against anyone that speaks out against their criminal behavior. More importantly, this trial shouldn't even be happening to Assange. It was revealed that a company called Undercover Global was spying on him throughout Assange's time at the Ecuadorian embassy. And they went so far as to put cameras and microphones all over the place, including the women's bathroom, so there would be no privacy for Julian Assange and, all, and also uh, any woman in the embassy. Okay, they pulled off something no one really could, and that's being creepier than Jeff Bezos. Undercover Global was contracted by the CIA and essentially erased attorney-client confidentiality on behalf of Assange. And the fact that this judge knew that this meant that this case should have been thrown out and Assange should have been let go. The rules are always different when the establishment elites are trying to show you how big their dicks are. And that's probably why they keep spying on people. It's a covert dick measuring op operation. Yeah, it's, a, it's a panopticon of a variety of fallacies. And more importantly, the law this trial is based around is a sham too. The Espionage Act was a creation of a paranoid Democrat using fear to rule and someone that didn't want a fucking socialist to win in the 20s. Woodrow Wilson was so scared of the other that he created the Espionage Act, or beta test for McCarthyism, to keep us divided and distrustful of each other. It also ensured that we wouldn't be able to criticize the military for their war crimes under the risk of depatriotism, right? which, which just means that a man in an Uncle Sam costume uh, would spank you in the town square as everyone yelled, so shall ask, really loud in your face, and uh, you can't wear anything uh, with red, white, or blue on it. And look, as a goth kid at heart, I think I'll be just fine. During the trial, Assange wasn't allowed to sit with his lawyers. He was kept in a bulletproof box where he couldn't hear things or say things. This primarily is, is meant to keep political prisoners and domestic terrorists safe during trials so no one tries to assassinate them. The judge literally told him to stay quiet, which means Julian Assange is being treated less respectfully than murderers and cannibals who have had fairer trials. At least they were allowed to talk about how delicious the judge looked. And really, all Julian Assange is trying to say is how delicious the truth really is. I mean, the establishment is going to ample lengths to prove that the truth will not set you free. The trial resumes in May, when the defense will have to put forth a case the establishment elites can't knock down and prove that his case lies within the U.S.-U.K. extradition treaty. The prosecution claims it's domestic, but makes the argument that he's a political prisoner for political crimes but isn't being prosecuted p politically because, well, remember, uh, uh, Russia... Their hypocrisies are laid out in front of us, and it's clear as day. Right now, the only candidate talking about Assange or any whistleblower is Tulsi Gabbard, who has said that she would pardon all of them. Sanders hasn't made any remarks, and that's probably because he doesn't want to get swept up in the McCarthyist Russiagate narrative that surrounds Assange, and um, also now the Sanders campaign, because, well, well why not? You know, it's, it's not like we were using our brains in the first place. This trial might be the most important trial of our generation. It will determine the future of journalism. It will determine whether we can go up against corruption in our leadership and hold the elites accountable for what they do. 
Despite being imprisoned, Julian Assange did set the truth free for all of us to consume. Regardless of what his fate is, we know what we're fighting for. We are fighting against oligarchy and imperialism that affects us on a global scale. The truth has been set free, and no matter what the establishment elites do, it can never be caged again. And we have Julian Assange to thank for that. I'm going to be uh, on tour, uh, and I'm actually going to be recording my next live stand-up comedy album over the next few weeks. Uh, March 20th, I'm going to be at the Reliable Tavern in Washington, D.C. March 21st, I'm going to be at the Art House Projects in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. April 2nd through the 4th, I am going to be recording my album at Mr. Roboto at the Pittsburgh Fringe Festival in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. If you guys are in those cities, come out and check out this show. Uh, it's been quite some time since I have done a full show in any of these cities, in Washington, D.C., Williamsport, or Pittsburgh. So come see the final product. Come see how far Politely Angry has gotten um, and, uh, and grab those tickets right now. They're available on my website, ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.com. But I also have uh, live stand-up comedy shows where I will probably be starting to work on a brand new show with brand new material. Uh, and I'm coming to Tarentum, Pennsylvania, Baltimore, Maryland, Louisville, Kentucky, Knoxville, Kentucky, Cincinnati, Ohio, Cleveland, Ohio, Morgantown, West Virginia. Um, I'm going to be all over the place. Once again, that website is ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com. I'm also going to be opening for Lee Camp on his stand-up comedy and book release show. If you buy uh, VIP tickets to these shows, you get a free copy of the book and a souvenir USB of Lee's last comedy special. So you do not want to miss these shows. They're going to be a super fun time. Uh, and on some of these shows, we also have Eleanor Goldfield joining us. She's going to be on these shows as well. Uh, we, Lee is coming to Flagstaff, Arizona, Tucson, Arizona, Asheville, North Carolina, two shows in Asheville, North Carolina. Uh, we're also going to be in Greensboro, North Carolina, Atlanta, Georgia, Burlington, Vermont, Montreal, Ottawa, and we're going to be all over the place. So go to leecamp.com slash schedule or my website, ramennoodlescomedy.com to grab your tickets and come hang out with us. This show uh, comes to you free. Uh, there's no charge for any of the content that I release. Very little is behind a paywall, but if you would like to financially contribute to this show, you can do so by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha. Uh, there are a bunch of goals and rewards, and if, for, for any level, for any level of patron, which starts at $2 a month, you get exclusive, unreleased stand-up comedy tracks that you uh, are the only people that would get. Only the patrons get these tracks. Uh, another way you can become a sustaining member is uh, by going to my website, ramennoodlescomedy.com, and uh, clicking on those big orange buttons and becoming a sustaining member directly through my website. No third party involved at all. Uh, and the third and final way that you can become a sustaining member is over at the Bandcamp page. If you go to ramennoodlescomedy.bandcamp.com, you can become a sustaining member and get collections of stand-up comedy material. These are, these are album-length, exclusive stand-up comedy and storytelling material. And none of these, uh, none of these uh, bits and, and stories and pieces are, are available uh, anywhere else. They are early versions of shows. The very first time that I per performed uh, a specific show or a storytelling show or uh, a show where I kind of just riffed with the audience and, you know, it's like stuff that you'll never hear ever again unless you come to a live show. You might catch one or two of these very special moments. Uh, so go to ramennoodlescomedy.bandcamp.com 
to uh, become a sustaining member there. Lots of different ways to support this show. If if you can't uh, support the show financially, that's 100% okay. Like I said, very little is behind a paywall. All of my content, like my podcasts and videos, are available for free for everybody to enjoy and consume. Uh, but make sure that you are subscribed. Make sure that you like. Make sure you're getting notifications. Sign up uh, for my email list to make sure that you get updates on uh, all of the uh, all of the fun, uh, exciting things that uh, that I'm doing, all the content that I'm putting out there. Uh, that's a, a really great way to keep in touch because censorship is real, you guys. Uh, even small fries like me tend to get censored every once in a while. They don't get, I don't get shown to as many people. So make sure you guys are subscribed. Make sure you like and and uh, share. Sharing is a big way that you help independent media uh, reach more new people. Share it with uh, within groups. Share it within with your friends, with your enemies, whoever you think might enjoy content like this. Uh, sharing's caring. And uh, it's, a, it's a really big way that independent media gets to reach whole new people. Uh, thank you guys so much to all the people that have already subscribed and become patrons. Uh, thank you guys very much. I really appreciate it. Returning viewers, thank you guys for, for coming back. New viewers, I hope to see you guys again. I really appreciate uh, all of the support. 